and welcome to Abby's Den. I'm Abby and I'm sitting here in front of my machine to move on to the next stage of this pattern. If you've been following the other tutorials, you will have read the back of the envelope with me. You'll understand what it all means. You'll understand technical jargon like notions and what all the different types of interfacing, um, how many buttons to buy and things like that, how to lay out the pattern pieces onto our fabric and cut them out correctly and that's really important to get them done correctly and then in the fourth tutorial we went through the darts and the stay stitching oh, so in this episode today we need to get cracking we've got a lot to do we're going to put on the welt right so it says continue as for all views apply interfacing to the wrong side of the welt so here's the welt take the pin off it's gone all curly because I've had it sitting around for so long so there's the spotty side I can feel the spotty side I don't have the shiny version and there we go there's one there and there's the other I'm going to put them there okay Here's my pressing cloth. Now I've got to be really careful the pieces don't move. Let's be careful. Let's just again mark this up because I can't see the dots you see. Fold the welt in half lengthwise with right sides together. So that's like that. Matching the small and large dots now and stitch the ends in three eighths of an inch, one centimetre. So if I place the seam guide along the one centimetre or the three eighth, that really just sits there. I've got a denim needle in there. So it's a size 80, which I'm happy with. I'm going to follow that seam guide. Make sure you lock your stitches. can take off five now number six now six corresponds with the outside of um, the denim jacket front so turn the welt right side out press machine base three eighth of an inch which is one centimeter from the raw edge we'll do that first Then we need to press that down. The basting is really using the longest stitch that can come out easily. So I'm going to use the longest stitch that the machine allows and that's five millimeters. So just whack your stitch length up to the maximum. We're still on three eighths there. I've not moved the magnet and I'm going to place that there i'm not going to do any reverse lock stitches let's put the press foot down and i'm just going to run a stitch right across that end there and cut that away and i can just place the next one down and go for that Right, so now they're done, we can go into the next instruction. So, turn the welt the right side out, press machine base 3 8 or 1 centimetre from raw edge. That's a big tick. On outside, pin welt to vest front along the welt lines, matching small and large dots. The dots actually landed exactly where that seam is and they actually do land there, so on the end of the base. So if you've done everything correctly, so you've sewn the side seams there and you've sewn this basting stitch in the right place, you'll find that dot is actually that point there. Now, the welt line is on the wrong side, isn't it? Well, that's no good to us because we need to pin that in the right place. 
So I'm going to run a basting stitch right across there and keep that level. I can see it's not exactly in the middle there. Pop that back in the middle and let's go. I'm going to stop dead on where it meets. And there we go. So there's my basting stitch. I flip this over. I can see that there. And now I know where to place my welt. So it says on the outside, pin welt to vest, vest front along the welt line matching the small and large dots and baste. The dots are the ends of the basting. So the basting line of the base of the welt is also the basting stitch on the vest. So as long as I make sure that they all sit together like that, that's it done. So I'm going to stick that down again and then again you know we don't need any lock stitching when we baste on the largest seam. Now that's stuck down and we baste it really just to check it's correct. So what we need to do is just flip it over and just check it's in the right place and it is. So I'm going to reduce the seam length, the stitch length, back to default. Put the press foot down. Okay, there we go. So that's sewn into place. So six is done. We've stitched along the basting. Now we need to trim close to the stitching. I'm going to fold the fabric over, the vest over again. Make sure I trim really nice and close to the vest. Try and keep it nice and even if you can. Just feeling, making sure I'm not cutting anything away that I shouldn't quite scary right there we go let's go back to the instructions so we've done the two welts it's a lot to do and yet there's not turn welt up press top stitch or slip stitch ends in place okay so this is entirely in your hands I'm going to top stitch because it's denim if you were doing brocade, if you were doing um, a delicate fabric, then I would be inclined to do a hand stitch. And there we go. I'm going to get my clapper, really useful tool again. A friend of mine made this for me. She's 85 and she's absolutely amazing. So when I do a top stitch, I'm going to put the foot down and I like to use something as a guide. So on my machine, I like to use the inside of the metal part of the foot. So the prong. And then just go slightly off like that. Let me show you that. There you go. Right, that's that done. Eight, stitch the centre back seam of the vest from small dot to the neck. So we're leaving that section at the bottom to cross over. Hopefully you can see that cross. And I'm going to put that pin right at the end. So, as long as I follow a seam allowance of five eighths,
structure. So if I close it like they have there, so if I close it over like that, it looks the same. So, but I've pressed the seam open. Now I'm going to join the pieces, stitch front to back at the shoulder seams. Right, let's sew our five eighths along there. That point where it squares off. And we do. Again, another indication of good stitching. So see how that square bit met the curve like that. And we've got perfect round and our seam allowances match. Our stay stitching match as well, don't they? Virtually, almost. Over like this. Now, when you work with fabrics like denim, my fingers are starting to go to blue. <laughs> so just be prepared for things like that. And if you work on things like Taylor's ham, you might transfer the colour over onto the ham as well. I'm going to just... There. Number nine, fold the belt in half with right sides together. For right belt, stitch along the edge of belt at 3 8 inch. Take one piece off and repin. And then that's, and we tailor tack those, that's good. So and I am going to transfer that dotted line by the dots there. I'm going to just mark up along there. It's a straight line. Everything's straight on this, so it's pretty easy. And then there, draw the sewing line. Like that. And I'll start on that sewing line at the back there. Reinforce that with a back stitch. And then pivot. There we go. And that's three eighths. Going to remove that pin, and in theory, I should go over that yellow thread, that tailor tack I drew, I sewed in in the first video, in the previous video. There we go. Go all the way to the end this time. That's brilliant. So we've trimmed the seams and the corners. We've got them all done. So we're on to number 10. Turn the belts the right side out and press. That's easy enough. I have these tube turners. So what you do, it's just a big straw, but it's quite rigid. And you poke your bamboo stick in there like that. And there it is. So the same again on the other one. Just pop that in there and push through like that. Use the sharp side to push out the corners. There we go. Just roll so that the seam is on the edge like that. Keep your fingers well away. Steam is hot and it burns. Slip finished end of the right belt through the centre of the buckle that I've done there. And then turn under two and a half centimetres, that's one inch, which is pretty much that much. And to the underside and stitch close to the end. So I'm going to run a stitch line along there. Okay, that's that done. So now 10's done, we're on to number 11 on outside on um, pin belts to the back. So we need to go back 
to the back we've got to find our markings which are there I can see them so I need to transfer those over to the right side okay so the small dot was on the seam wasn't it so we're going to put the small dot at the bottom so I'm going to put the long piece on this side with the seam at the bottom and it's going to match the dots and then the dots are three eighths of an inch in I need to have that at one centimeter a couple of pins there like that get rid of that pin as well and do the same on that side so a quarter of an inch is on the inside so find your seam allowance I showed you in a video how to do that in the previous video how to work it out now I'm going to follow my quarter of an inch there and lock the stitches Get rid of that pin and actually, because I can hold it, it's so small, I can go all the way down. And I'm going to just trim that now. Trim that away. Fold it over like that and then stitch a quarter of an inch again so we do that again on the other side So that's all for today's episode. We've got our belt done. I've got blue fingers. <laughs> I'm going to do the lining in exactly the same way without the welt and the belt. So all I need to do for the lining is join the shoulders. So I need to change my needle back to a 60. And I think we've had a Quite a successful afternoon doing that. There we go. Yeah. <laughs>